should have uh, shaved my beard. Oh, hello, and welcome to another Retainer Designer Friday live stream. I do have my son, Beckett. Say hello, Beckett. Hello. <laughs> He's helping me with the uh, camera switching and stuff. So today's live stream, I got a special order. So I got these, I got a text from one of the assistants uh, saying, hey, you, can we change a color on a retainer? I was like, sure. They're like, the patient wants a different color. We didn't even deliver these yet. I don't know if she saw them or if the office, they accidentally put the wrong color and they realized the patient wanted a different color. So they were like, hey, can you change the colors? I was like, sure. They're like, do you need the retainers back? I said, yes, definitely. And the models. So they gave me the models back and the retainers. So today we're actually just going to be taking the wires. We're going to re be removing the wires off the retainers and uh, putting them back on here and doing regular retainers. And, and I'll show you my little trick for removing the acrylic safely without damaging the wires. But that was a very important thing was I wanted the wires and I don't charge them as much. So that way I don't have to rebend these wires. So that's that's good. So these are the, the two retainers. They are luminary blue. They want to change them to luminary blueberry, <laughs> which it's a little bit more purple, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll honor what they want to do, what the patient wants to do. And, and I like to offer, and, and that was one of the questions was, I want it to offer uh, all, I think I offer 80 colors. I, I want the patients to be happy with their retainers. I want them to be able to uh, show them off. If they have a color they like or a design they like, hence the name of retainer designer, they can choose whatever color they want. They'd be proud of it and they'll wear them. And that's the important thing is they wear these retainers. So what we do need to do is actually prep these as if I'm doing new acrylic. And you can see these are the old ones that we made the originals on. So I really need to re-wax in here. Uh, these were not the best scans that I got, but you know, they'll, they'll work obviously. Obviously this is a, a very horseshoe upper holly and that's because uh, the scan wasn't all there. So I'm gonna put a little bit of wax at this little void that never got scanned and that way my wax doesn't get into that void. All right, so do my usual waxing on the, the posterior area right by the molars, uh, the rugae, uh, anywhere I think it needs it. I think there's a little bit of undercut right here. I'm gonna block that. Uh, any undercuts in 3D printed models, I've, I've, I've preached on it for many weeks now through these live streams. I need to block out because th th these 3D printed models are not forgiving. Ah, oh, I didn't soak my brush. So I'm gonna put this first layer on. I'm gonna soak my brush. I do have a little thing of water behind me. A little water bucket behind me. Oh yeah, there we go. Got a new camera angle here. So I have a little, it's a heat shield bucket. <laughs> uh, and I put my, my brush in here and it's got a little bit of water. And so that's what I do, because this will get stiff with this uh, separator on here. All right, so let's do this lower, get it prepped. And it's, the wax is actually still on here. We, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we do have a duck cam. Uh, I just can't keep a camera out there, especially in this heat. My cameras keep saying, you know, too much, it needs to power down, it's got too much heat. So I'm using a cell phone. So you know how if you leave a cell phone out, uh, in in the sun uh, it does not like that so I'm going to paint this one and on these 3d, 3D models uh, I'm just treating this as if there is no on there oh, okay did you bring it in it burns your fingers <laughs> oh yeah that's super hot oh dang okay yeah I'm gonna set it here and we'll let it cool. What we're gonna do is we'll put it in the window in here uh, when it cools down. All right, so I got these painted. Uh, so let's go now. Huh? Oh, we got a comment. Perry, how does the gray resin print? So this is, uh, this is draft resin. So draft resin does a pretty good job printing. It, it does it faster than gray. Gray, gray I think is pretty, pretty tough. It, it, draft is a little more brittle 
but I, I've learned to counteract with it, put up with it because the, the draft resin, um, it prints twice as fast as gray. So gray prints really good. Uh, it just it, like this, these two, if I print these two, uh, like an hour and a half or less, maybe an hour to print these two on, on draft, it'd be uh, two to three hours to print in gray. Uh, so gray does print really good, it prints slow, but it's a little bit tougher than draft. Draft is a little bit more brittle. Anyway, we're gonna let these dry, These uh, uh, this first layer of separator uh, cure, I guess. We're gonna see, so I realize I cannot put one of these in direct sunlight, that's, that's a new thing. So, I have talked about these before. These are my uh, stainless steel bristle brushes. Uh, and right now I get them from JBC. You can get them most places. So like your Buffalo bristle brushes, these are, but these are stainless steel. And these will actually cut through acrylic really fast, but not damage your wires. So that's what I like to use to remove these things. I'm gonna turn the suction on. The good thing is this was never put in the patient's mouth. And it's good to use suction because you know you're gonna have acrylic just shooting off of this thing. But you can see it, it just digs out that acrylic really fast. So there is, well I bent that really far. It's funny to see your work when it comes back. Um, it's a real eye-opening experience, especially if like a, a, a patient has worn it for a while and it's like broken or something. You can see the adjustments that the doctor had to make on your retainer. It's a good learning process. Like, oh, my, my labial bow wasn't you know tight enough when I delivered it. Uh, maybe I need to work on that. But uh, this this is kind of frustrating a little bit because you know you, you made perfectly two good retainers, but they want to change the the uh, the colors on them. But it's fine. Mistakes happen. I make it on my end. They make the assistants make it on their end, and uh, we help each other out. So there's one. So notice I went from the tissue side of the retainer, and because uh, that's thinnest. If I went from the top side. Uh, I have to go through a lot more acrylic to get down to the wire, but the wire is closer on the tissue side than on the uh, tongue side. So let me remove this name. Let's see, what RPM am I using? Like 1920 RPM. And you need a pretty good handpiece. Uh, cheap handpiece is... Okay, I'll get to it when I get back. There we go. So you just work on this. Uh, just work it and all you have to do is worry about uh, taking the acrylic off and again the wires weren't damaged during this process no wires were hurt in the filming of this video and right now I'm just kind of cleaning this up you can see this is a little off that's where they me or them probably me adjusted this Adams clasp which put pressure on here so when I took it out of the acrylic it actually uh, the pressure got relieved a little bit there too so you'll you'll notice that if you go and crank down your labial bow with the acrylic on uh, if you re end up removing that wire that that wire and the acrylic will you know it'll, it'll release it'll spring out because uh, now it's not under under pressure anymore so now I take all of this and I'll go ahead and take these two and I'll go back to my other camera. Michaela, holy smokes, what are you doing? What are you doing to the retainers? <laughs> yeah, um, the, the patient asked for a different color. I'm stripping the, the acrylic off of the wires or, or stripping the wires out of the acrylic so I can just change the colors real quick. Uh, this overhead cam. This is one of the bad things about using those stainless steel bristle brushes. You'll get these tiny little, um, wires stuck in you uh you'll find them all over so that's another reason to use a good suction uh is using those wires yeah but uh we're this is just a video on um changing out the acrylic colors and the reason i ask for the retainers back now um you know if, if one of the rules i've set in my lab is if they ask for a replacement or repair or something like that that i'm gonna put both these under a fan let them dry real good but again uh it was a perfectly good retainer i just wanted to change the color sometimes it's the uh sometimes you have to do this internally 
because the the doctor uh, sorry you do the retainer the wrong color on the script you just do it you just mess up um uh so when you go to sometimes you do internal remakes that's what an internal remake is it, is you just make it in the wrong color you look at the wrong script uh you grab the wrong bottle you you're you're in a rut or uh something and, and you just you just do it in the wrong color it gets found out in the end and this is the same process you got to take it hopefully your model survived that's one good thing about 3d printed models is one they're pretty tough um even this draft perry uh it'll survive most taking the retain usually on a plaster model you take the retainer off the teeth will break off so you either got to keep all the teeth in a container that's what we used to do in one of the labs i worked at so you have internal remakes or if the doc the doctor's assistants they uh put the wrong color down and the patient's upset and stuff like that like i said i like the patients to have uh, a lot of uh choices in their colors so they'll re they'll wear their retainers so i usually try to be nice about it uh, i just charge like a uh acrylic replacement charge um, I don't charge for all new retainers because they sent the retainers back and that's a good thing to, to do for repairs and stuff so you can actually uh, I'll do a free replacement if it didn't fit provided you send back the model and the retainer um, and then I decide if it's gonna be free actually because um, if it fits the model I did my job if it doesn't fit the mouth that means the model was wrong so uh, that's why it's always good to ask for the retainer back uh, cause then you can scavenge the wires, um, and reuse them and it saves you time in, in making it. Um, and, and that's it. Yeah. AKA re-acrylic. That's a good term. I like that. So we're re-acrylicing today. Uh, we're, we're not bending wires cause we already bent the wires once. We no use bending them again. Uh, and then we're just stripping off the old acrylic, putting on new acrylic. So from this process on, it is actually normal, normal retainer construction, I guess. So, all right, let's see if this is dry. All right, so this fits on here pretty good. So I'm just gonna sticky wax it down. Actually, I see a little adjustment I can make. I'm just gonna do it with my hand. Becky got, <laughs> you're so fast with that. I got it. I work at a lab in an office. We cut down a few years ago just to save natural pink and clear, but we are only, we are only going, going only to clear soon. Haha, <laughs> no colors. Oh. Yeah, uh, that is one of the things. Uh, some offices, they do not give the patients, um, I, and I understand, because sometimes the patients will agonize agonize over the color chart. And as you see, the colors behind me, the colors behind me, there's a ton of them. And if they got to agonize over that, it, if they agonize over those colors, they could be there for 30 minutes <laughs> trying to decide on the color. And then sometimes you, you run into this problem. So yeah, uh, pure, pure Annika, uh, I'm saying that wrong. I know I am. And that was one of the things that they asked in this case, when I got a text from the assistant, he, he asked, Hey, do you do all the colors on your color chart? I was like, yes, I, I carry all the colors. Some are definitely more popular than others. Uh, but this, this all notice how short I had to make my wires here on this time. <laughs> all right, let's do lower. This one I'm going to have to paint again because I didn't do, I gotta keep up with how many layers I do. Our problem, uh, it's like, oh, Peronica. Like Veronica with a P, thank you, Peronica. That's easy. Our problem was that no one would ask, would ask color or it would take forever for them to pick. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It would take forever for them to pick their color. And uh, so, so some would just give them like four colors to choose from and that's it. Um, and I'll, I'll see if I can grab that color chart real quick. Um, yeah, our problem. Okay. I got it. Yeah. Peronica. Yeah. That's a great idea. Um, and then these don't have expiration date really. Maybe some of the, the, the glitters down there, they have, sometimes they'll fade the, the actual glitter components will fade. But, uh, my monomer has like a weird shelf life of like six months. So you don't want to, you don't want to have a lot of colors because then they'll just expire and they won't work right and they'll do weird things. So yeah, I totally understand that. If you carry a lot of colors and nobody ever chooses a color, then, uh, but I bet Veronica, if you're working in a lab, you'd love to do the colors when they do come in. I know a, a lot of, a lot of labs that just did pink or clear day in and day out, they get excited when a red one comes in <laughs> or something like that. 
So I've been in that lab 16 years. We had a ton of colors back in the day, but now we don't even have anything other than pink and clear. When the pink expires, no more, huh? We, we don't make too many. Oh, okay, yeah, if you don't make too many, um, you know, that, that's, that's the bad thing. Acrylic things anymore. Yeah, is it all Essex? I know a lot of ortho lab, uh, in-house labs do tons of Essex or clear, clear retainers. So yeah, that's, that's the bad thing is, uh, colors are fun. Um, and maybe it's, it's us commercial labs and more, more us commercial labs and in-house labs that carry the colors. Uh, cause I could see how in-house labs could, could have a, a hard time care, keeping in stock all the colors. I'm going to have to, it's humid today. So my, my separator is having a hard time. It's like $250 for a little six ounce jar last time I checked. So I haven't used that stuff, but I've, I've heard it's really good stuff. So, Beckett, was, did you just say comment? Yeah. Pete's on vacation. I have not heard Pete. Have you heard Pete? He's sleeping somewhere. Uh, oh, bro, that's what you use. That's great. Yeah, it's much cheaper when you buy the 32 ounce. What is this ounce that I bought? One kilogram, this is a thousand. So that's what I use personally um, right now. Uh, I do have some other stuff that I've used before that I'll probably not switch back to soon. Uh, but anyway, that's what I use for these 3D printed models. So now that is dried, I'm gonna make a few small adjustments to this. All right, so wax that down. Uh, this is the one I need to make some big time adjustments on. I'm gonna get my model holder in here. Let's get this centered in here. This is the one I probably adjusted it too hard and so it flared, it popped out of the acrylic uh, whenever I went to remove the acrylic. So let's readapt this and then maybe I don't have to adjust it as much. Tuck that back down. So I like to use, I like to personally, and everybody's different, I like to make sure there's wire going all the way around um, the model. Beckett, you're so loud. <laughs> Can you hear yourself when you yell it? Yes, I always hear myself. Like you see, I'm kind of dealing with a very shallow mouth, so my wires have to be tucked up high, which I don't like, but that's just how it is. I'd rather have that a little lower, but um, my acrylic will, will cover that. Well, maybe I'll make one last thing here. Open that up, curl that up. Let's see how that changed. Anyway, we're gonna go over here. Okay, so they wanna switch to Luminary Blueberry. So that is what we're gonna use this time. Now always, I put a clear coat of acrylic down first. Uh, that To me, that serves two purposes. One, I like to put the name on the tissue side. Uh, that way you don't have to worry about the thickness of the acrylic. It's always there and always can see it. And then you can also see the wire. So if you're using a very opaque color uh, and you go to start trimming this, you will run into the problem of sometimes you can't see your wire. If you, and if you didn't bend it in your usual spot or something like that, you'll definitely hit your wire with your grinding wheel. And then I'll put a clear coat on top of that way too much monomer so that's perfect again start with my clear coat this luminary blueberry tends to the color separates I don't know if you can see that it kind of marbles a little bit um, so you kind of I kind of do some little tricks um, one is the uh, instead of doing big drops like this which tends to make it the pigment separate I'll use tiny smaller drops like that and that tends to keep the droplet small, which will keep the, the pigment separation small. And then you can also, uh, you know, pat it down with your finger and that will keep the uh, pigments from separating. Kind of hard when this retainer is, the model is kind of, I didn't get the full palette scan on this. I don't let that sit. I need to cut that, uh, but I, I need to, I'm going to let it sit and just kind of cure just a little bit. And that way, um, 
I can make my cuts a lot cleaner. Let me get the name for the lower. Again, y'all don't have to worry, most of y'all don't have to worry about names. Here in Texas, it's state law. You gotta, you gotta have a name in, in the retainer. So, or some, not a name, but necessarily, but some sort of uh, identification mark. You notice then I just now uh, looked over at my upper, saw that it was trying to slump. So I put a little powder on there to freeze it. It's slumping, you see that on the upper? It's starting to slump again. So usually I'll do one side of the lower or the, the next model. Uh, you notice I, I did this in a few weeks ago, live stream, how to sprinkle multiple models at once. Um, how you can just kind of, you don't have to do one pressure pot, one pressure pot, one pressure pot. If you get fast enough with your acrylic, you can actually do multiples at a time. See, so that's, that's almost there. I'm gonna let it sit just a little bit longer. So put a clear coat on this other underside and then we'll go and try to cut the upper again. That's starting to slump. See how shiny it is? Shiny is not your friend until you're polishing. You want to keep it, you know, matte finished. Actually, I, I just got right into it. Let me get this cut. I got distracted sprinkling. That's one, one of the bad things about doing multiple. Don't get distracted. Keep a, keep it, keep your head on a swivel. I'm just going to cut right through there and then scrape away. What I'm trying to create is a nice area for my knife to get up underneath to uh, get the retainer, the acrylic off the model. So you see a nice sharp line. Um, again, you, you're I can't state this enough, you gotta be careful. And if you're a pair, you've, you've noticed this, um, if you scrape too much, you're gonna scrape off the separator. And so you got raw model now. So once you do this cut, you cannot add anymore in this area right here. Uh, Cause it'll stick like, like crazy. All right, into the pressure pot that goes, I'm gonna add a little bit of acrylic just in case it slumps, I don't think it's going to but hopefully it'll slump onto that powder and not the raw model. And, woo, there we go. Oh, this is starting to try to slump on me. Actually, not bad. The bad thing about cutting some of these is when you don't have a very big model, you know, height-wise, like you didn't get a good skin or something like that, um, it makes you're, you're kind of cut and blind you could easily cut into the wire right, so this side should be good so just cut through there and cutting also saves you a little bit of time on trimming yeah this is not liking where that cuts going but that's where it is not a very pretty there we go I like how that's coming off and of course I sprinkled this side first so it's cured this side is actually cured faster because I sprinkled it first so that feels a little thin right there, but they have tori. So you know how I said don't add any more acrylic? <laughs> I'm doing it. Uh, it just feels a little thin right there. It looks thin to me. There we go. I, I feel a little bit better about that. Now I gotta make sure I get remove this new acrylic off of this model down here. All right. That's kind of trying to slump. Let me put a little, this is not my best work. That is for sure, but I think it's mainly the model not cooperating with me. So into the pressure pot. All right. I got my sample ones here that my, my sons have done. So I'm gonna put this one that was on the cup into the water. Again, with the 3D printed models, you can go, really you can go directly into the model. I just, my habit is this uh, using the cup, so I just, there's no reason to steer clear of that. I'm going to uh, try to separate these models. It should be ready to go. Put that in the water. Oh, hot, hot, hot. So this is my, get these trot practice ones out of the way. I'm going to take off the sticky wax before it cools and hardens back and keeps my wires tacked on and then I'm going to slide my knife up underneath my cut mark and push it up there we go now one thing I'm not doing is I'm not
sliding it and then prying it toward me. I'm more planting the tip of my knife and then using a moving motion to get that off of there. And I'm gonna clean up the wax a little bit. There we go. Okay, I feel a little better. No, I don't. That's sticking. I'm scared now. Oh no. Remember, uh, remember the side I said, don't add, okay, Whew. okay. <laughs> that side I said, don't, never re-add acrylic <laughs> after you've made your cuts. Uh, yeah, I thought it was stuck on me. Happens every once in a while. All right, so I got these. I'm gonna go to the steamer. All right, so, I mean, all this going on is, is, is pretty basic. Um, I'm gonna use a, uh, wheel here just to get the borders done you can't see that can you there we go i'll just have to you can see part of it in the corner you get the the borders oh i gotta turn the suction on i can smell this i get the uh all the borders of the retainer trimmed up nice that's mainly what i use this wheel for is getting the borders where i want them uh, you can work on the thickness a little bit. I have a little bit of wax on those tori on this lower. That are right here. You can't really see it in the thing, but I tend to put wax on there. I know those tori they're very sensitive for those uh, patients that have them. Uh, you know, just ask them whenever they're eating uh, chips and salsa and a chip stabs them in their tori. Uh, they about come out of their chair. My wife has them. Uh, and she says they're real sensitive. So I try to wax so the acrylic's not sitting directly on them in case that causes some irritation. So those are those little humps right there. All right, there we go. I think I got it pretty close. I turned that off. Now, here's the thing. We're gonna use that uh, bristle brush again. And I like to usually start, let me start with a knife though. Uh, I'm, I'm, now that this has cooled down, that's one good thing about this sticky wax is it should just fracture off and uh, that way you don't get wax in your burrs and stuff. But you shouldn't be touching your wires with the burrs anyway. But uh, I like to use these bristle brushes to uh, clean up around the wires. And I usually just go right to pretty much you can tell right where the the uh, wire goes starts going into the acrylic into the roof of the mouth in, in the case of this upper one uh, that's usually where I bring it to and that helps clean it up helps the retainer sit better on the model when you're when you're trying it on the, the model later in a little bit and then I'll clear up any of these little areas that are going in between the teeth sharpen them all up I like to do it first before I go to my uh, uh, burr, my burr of choice. So again, I'm just just going along the wire. Again, you don't have to worry about this damaging the wire, and uh, just going along until you know you'll get a good 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 handle on it. Uh, usually, sometimes you have to click off this acrylic anyway when you're QCing just because it, it gets up it gets in the way when you're trying to seed it back on the model. So I'm gonna switch to my uh, aggressive burr right here and let me do this upper one and I just start doing a little bit more fine-tuned trimming getting the height on top of the teeth where I want them. Same thing here. Some this is where you would scallop so instead I'm a little high over here, so I just go back and forth on the model until I get this acrylic where I want on the tooth. And of course it depends on how big the teeth are. If they're short teeth, these are kind of medium, kind of on the short side, I'll do half the tooth. If it's like big, huge honking teeth, I'll do uh, a little bit further down. Just, you know, patient comfort. They, uh, they won't wear this if one, they're going to slur their speech the thicker you make it right here. But if you make it too thin, then it gets weak. So it's, it's a give or take, give and take relationship. It's got to be thick enough 
to be strong. And this is where I start. Remember how I got the, the height right here? This is where I'll start tapering together and put it back on the model. Check my acrylic height. It seems a little high, but maybe I can knock it down just a little bit. So you see these scalloping. This is then I flip it over and I just blend it. So when you do the uh, a bristle brush here, you're gonna make a little ledge, and you use these to these burrs to to taper them in, contour and stuff. So let me shorten these just a little bit more so they look better on the model, maybe more comfortable for the patient, and then blend them in. I could probably take my bristle brush right here take that down some but let me see what it looks like on the model yeah I'm gonna you can take a knife you can cut at it if you want a razor blade or you can just again the downfall is you get these little metal hairs stuck in you in your socks and your underwear your bra and then I'm looking at one thing you can do let me go grab something is when you're replacing the acrylic uh, you can actually get the old acrylic since it was saved from using the, the stainless steel bristle brush, you could actually put it back on the model. This will also help you know, you know, hey, uh, you know, something was wrong with the model. Uh, you take all the wires off, you put the acrylic base back on, and you can tell if something has gone wrong with it. And then you can kind of see, you know what, this is a little taller than this one. Then it's probably this missing piece, this gap. Yep. See how that's hanging over it. So my wife, when she probably, she's the one that probably trimmed this. She probably played it safe and uh, made it taller. So then I can just go back to this wheel and uh, remember the clear coat I had you we put on there. I can see where the wires are, so I can actually get a little closer. Well, you can't see what I'm doing. I'll, I'll show it to you in a second. So. Uh, you can see, I need a, uh, if I had my steamer, I'd take this wax off. But you can see my wires, I can see them. If I had co covered them in uh, the luminary blueberry all the way through without using a clear coat on the bottom, I wouldn't be able to see that. I wouldn't know where my wires were. So now that I shortened it, it should match what was originally on here. Now, that's one thing you need to think about, uh, especially if, if it's a patient that had worn their acrylic. Uh, I use this for repairs, this method. Just strip out the, the wires and just replace all the acrylic instead of repairing it. Because sometimes the, the roof of the mouth changes and all that stuff. Uh, it, it's good to have the old acrylic handy so you can see the patient's used to the feel of this acrylic in their his or her mouth. Uh, if you go and start changing it a lot, um, it'll take them a little bit wire to a little while to get used to it. All right. If you want, you can go to a finer tooth burr uh, to do any. Now, see all those little hairs on there. I don't know if you can see them. Uh, you gotta. You don't want them in your handpiece. Call it. So you gotta pull them off. Like I said, that is the bad part about using these. This is the one downfall. Like I said, this won't attack the wires as bad. It will. In fact, I use this burr for uh, trimming solder joints, so it will get the metals, uh, but you kind of got to be pr more purposeful, purposeful about it. Or you can skip this step and just go straight to sandpaper, so let's do that. Here's my sandpaper called a split mandrel, and my sandpaper's falling off, so I'm going to let me turn this off. Uh, sometimes I have to fold it when this split gets a little worn out. You can also take a pair of pliers, squeeze it down, uh, and then you don't have to fold the paper like this. But I, we use, we get this from uh, Great Lakes Ortho. There's the number. Um, but it comes in a big roll and you just tear off a, a, a chunk of it. And then I just roll it up on the, the split mandrel like that, put it on here. And then this is like, like a pre-pumicing is what I like to think of it like. So just like sanding wood or metal or anything, you're gonna go with the coarsest grit first, which was that green wheel, uh, and then you know go to the coarse burr, and then you can go to a fine burr, and then this is in between a fine burr and pumice. And there we go, and that is ready for pumice. So let's just go pumice this one real quick. There we go. 
No, we need Beckett. We need like an auto uh, treat feeder out there for the ducks. So when we need to switch to the duck camera, it'll throw out some, some grub worms or something. Oh, there's a, is that pepper? That's pepper. How many of you think that y'all could pumice blindfolded? Do it long enough, you think you could just do it by feel, just by touching it like that? I do it just a little bit on the tissue side. Again, I didn't get to use my my steamer, so hopefully the pumice will take any wax off of there. So I'm gonna rinse this. Oh, my steamer's ready, okay. All right, a little high shine on the wheel. Make this nice and shiny. Okay, so we're done with that one. We have officially gone from luminary blue to blueberry. You can see how that works like that. Uh, if I had the right kind of camera, I could turn off all the lights in here and these both these would glow. But you can see a difference between blue, luminary blue and luminary blueberry. So I think the patient will be extremely happy with that change. And uh, we'll, and that's it. That's pretty much it. It, it was pretty much a uh, just a switch from using, just taking out the wires and using a uh, stainless steel bristle brush. So that's my secret really to take the wires out. And also it helps in the trimming part process too. So anyway, uh, I will call it there. Thank y'all for watching again. Hopefully this helps someone. And like Perry said, it's, it's fun watching everybody's techniques and, and tricks and stuff. Again, thank you. Hey, subscribe and uh, uh, hit the notification bell. I go live every Friday. There may be a change up in the next few weeks uh, as a, I'm gonna try to start a ORG podcast. Uh, so where I interview different lab owners across the world and nation. So that should be fun. So it may replace this time slot uh, and I'll move this time slot somewhere else. So make sure you subscribe and hit the notification so you, you keep up with uh, uh, what's, what's the new exciting things that are coming up. So thank you so much. Anyway, uh, I'll see y'all next time. Thank y'all for hanging out. And uh, until then, happy bending.